It seems like the idea of trading for Devontae Adams is dead in the water with Antonio Pierce becoming the new coach of the Raiders. I want to take a look at seven wide receivers I think could be options for the New York Jets. J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets! There's always that one moment as a fan that crushes your soul in the offseason, and this one is happening for the New York Jets right now. Devontae Adams seemingly not getting traded by the Las Vegas Raiders because Antonio Pierce has become the new head coach of the Las Vegas Raiders, and this is what Devontae Adams had to say about it. Uh, he embodies what it means to be a Raider, and that mentality, that swag, and all the things that he endorses is things that I believe in. So it would seem very unlikely that Devontae Adams is going to get moved at this point in time now that Pierce is the head coach in Vegas. So that sends the Jets in a kind of weird direction. What do we do? Do we just look immediately towards the draft or do we try to go after some of these other wide receivers that are going to be free agents? I want to take a look at seven wide receivers that I think could be options for the New York Jets. The way I'm framing this, the, the bar that I'm kind of looking for is I'm looking for a bigger bodied wide receiver that complements Garrett Wilson and the wide receivers we already have on the roster. We had a horrible red zone team over the course of the last year. So I think getting a bigger body wide receiver is just what the doctor ordered. So these are the seven players that I think have those attributes and could benefit us uh, next year. And I want to go over a few different price points. I'm going to talk about some that could be franchise tag, some that may not cost a whole heck of a lot. Maybe there's some upside with some certain players, or maybe they've already hit their pinnacle of uh, play as we've seen in the NFL. So without further ado, let's hop into our wide receivers. This is the first one that I think everyone's going to pivot to and look towards. And this is Mike Evans out of Tampa Bay. He's 30 years old, six foot five, 231 pounds. He had 82 receptions this past year. He had his 10th season of over a thousand yards, 1300 yards on the season with 13 touchdowns. The Bucks do want him back. They need to re-sign Baker Mayfield, though, and last year he signed like a $5 million contract or whatever it was. It was not a whole heck of a lot to play down in Tampa, so they're going to have to give him a deal. How much is he willing to take? He still hasn't gotten paid his big, big contract. He got his rookie deal, but he never got like a monster deal in any capacity. Not that I think he's in line for a monster deal, but I do think that he should get paid uh, nicely here. Now, maybe there's a situation where Mike Evans gets franchise tagged. They were working on a negotiation up until the eve of week one, and then it wound up falling apart, and he said, I'm not working on a negotiation until after the season. Now, the thought was he wants the Cooper Cup deal. The Cooper Cup deal is three years, $80 million. That is a lot of cheddar to give for a wide receiver on the wrong side of 30, but Mike Evans might be playing at the best caliber of play that he's seen in the NFL, which is crazy to say 10 years into this thing. Uh, the Bucks only have 40 players under contract and have $47 million in salary cap, so in order to hit that 53-player threshold, they got to, you know, spend a little bit of money. And that's not even just 53 that's like on your roster. You got to fill out guys that are on the back end of it as well. So it's, it's going to be a little bit more than this. So I don't know what winds up happening with Mike Evans. Does he get franchise tag? Does he wind up leaving and going to another team? I think a lot of teams are going to be interested in him. Kansas City is probably going to want a wide receiver. They could be looking at him. Mike Evans was with the New York Jets in training camp this past year for a joint practice with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Jets. So there's a little familiarity, and even at one point, Mike Evans called uh, Quentin Williams fat on hard knocks. <laughs> so, you know, maybe he's going to have to apologize if he winds up coming to New York. This would be an awesome grab, but this is going to be a very expensive contract. You're looking at probably three years, $80 million, $27 million a year. Maybe he gets a little bit less than Cooper Cup, but like even still, this is a hefty, hefty contract when the New York Jets are slated to have between $50 and $60 million in cap space. Uh, the next player I want to take a look at so next one people are probably going to be talking about. It might even be talked about as the number one option for a lot of fans. That's T. Higgins out of Cincinnati. He's six foot four, 219 pounds. He's only 25 years old. That's the attractive part about T. Higgins. And he's been stuck behind Jamar Chase the last few years. So it's kind of nice to see like, well, this guy could be a number one on other teams. What would he look like with a lion's share of targets? He had 42 receptions this past year, 656 yards and five touchdowns. He had a career high 15.6 yards per reception. And the Bengals... They do have a lot of cap space, but they got to pay Jamar Chase. Not that his contract is up, but his contract is up for renegotiation. And he'd be pretty, I'd, I'd be pretty surprised if they didn't try to work out a long-term deal with him at this point in time. You got T. Higgins, obviously, that needs a contract. You got Jonah Williams that needs a contract. You got Tyler Boyd needs a contract. There's a lot of players in Cincinnati that are going to need uh, a contract here. So 
could Cincinnati hold on to all these guys? It's possible. I think it's it's very possible this guy's getting the franchise tag. Joe Burrow wants him back. He's part of the long-term plan. Burrow signed his long-term deal this past offseason, and apparently at that time they were negotiating or talking a little bit with T. Higgins and what, or talking with Burrow about what he would like to see for the future, and T. Higgins was in those plans. So a franchise tag of $21.6 million seems to be in order here. Now, based on statistics, the long-term contract for uh, T. Higgins would fall in line similarly to the 2022 deal that Mike Williams out in LA signed with the Chargers. That was three years, $60 million. So if he wanted to sign, let's call it four years, he's a little bit younger, he would get that four-year $92 million deal if all things are sort of held equal at that you know, percentage of cap at that point in time versus two years later in 2024. It's about $23 million a year. I really like T. Higgins. I think this would absolutely be worth it, but I don't know if he's going to end up leaving Cincinnati. And we'll get to another player from Cincinnati uh, momentarily. The next player up I want to take a look at is Michael Pittman. Michael Pittman's a very popular player among Jet fans. Guy's 6'4", 223 pounds. He's having a really good season, had a really good season this past year. 26 years old, 109 receptions on the year, 1,152 yards and four touchdowns. Now, he is a big body possession wide receiver, but he's not necessarily looked at the same as like a Mike Evans or a T. Higgins. I'm not exactly sure why. Maybe it's just like, uh, I don't know. I, you know, I'm honestly, I'm not, I'm not too sure. And it could just be quarterback play has been like kind of hampering the, the Colts down that way. Now, obviously, the young quarterback who they drafted last year, Anthony Richardson, he's going to need weapons and a big target wide receiver with a quarterback who may have some questionable accuracy, at least according to his draft scouting report last year. This would be someone that you could really take a look at and, and try to hold on to. He committed eight penalties in 2023, so really not like a great number that you want to see from your wide receiver, but $21.6 million. I think he is a prime candidate for the franchise tag. So there's a real good chance these top three wide receivers that we're looking at here that are set to hit the market may not even touch the market whatsoever. So I want to get into a few receivers that I think are going to be available uh, that sort of fit the same profile. And that's, you guys heard me talk about, you know, maybe someone other than T. Higgins, his teammate, Tyler Boyd out of Cincinnati, six foot two, 203 pounds. He's 29 years old. So a little bit older, four years older than uh, T. Higgins, 67 receptions, 667 yards and two touchdowns. He could be looking for an expanded role being stuck behind Jamar Chase and T. Higgins. Uh, he, like everyone else in Cincinnati, there's a lot of people that got to get paid. He might be the odd man out if the franchise tag gets applied to T. Higgins. Uh, he's got strong connection, connections to Pittsburgh. This is something to be critical of because Tyler Boyd played his college ball at Pittsburgh and he really likes Mike Tomlin. And if the Steelers are looking for a wide receiver, that's maybe a little bit of a bigger frame. Tyler Boyd may be willing to go back to uh, to Pittsburgh, and I think that could be a problem for the New York Jets if you're trying to sign this particular type of wide receiver. The Bengals did decline to trade him at the trade deadline, so that tells you something. Maybe he's looking to, to stay in Cincinnati. He does like the winning culture that they currently have there, and he has a shot to win a Super Bowl if he stays. It's just a matter how much he wants to get paid. Now, three years, $25 million is kind of what his contract prediction is according to SpotTrack. It's $8.4 million a year from a cost perspective I really like Tyler Boyd. I would be okay with signing him as a wide receiver too because we already have $11 million a year allocated towards Alan Lazard. So if you didn't necessarily want to add a big beefy contract to the wide receiver room, this could be an option that you could go towards, but he'd have to prove himself as a wide receiver too because are you really just going to wind up having maybe two wide receiver threes in Alan Lazard and then you know potentially Tyler Boyd here? Uh, I like Boyd though, personally. For the money, I think it would uh, be a worthwhile swing. On a low-end deal, you can take a look at DJ Shark. DJ Shark, six foot four, 200 pounds. He's 27 years old, coming from Carolina. Uh, he had three, 35 receptions this past year, 525 yards and five touchdowns. This was not a good season for DJ Shark. And I feel like a lot of his seasons the last few years have kind of been underwhelming, which is why he signed a one-year $5 million contract with the Panthers. Uh, poor quarterback play through 2023. Bryce Young, obviously a rookie. They fired their entire offensive staff, their head coach, everyone on that side of the ball. So a lot of turnover midseason. He did commit zero penalties in 2023, but he had the highest drop rate of any of the wide receivers that I looked at here. 9.4% drop rate. That is not good. But again, low end cost option might be worth a potential high end reward if uh, you think maybe he could achieve that level of uh, success. The next two players I want to take a look at are not free agents, but I think they are going to be. And the first one I want to take a look at is a charger 
over in Los Angeles, Mike Williams. I think both him and Keenan Allen could both become available, but I think I see Allen staying in LA at this point. He's been a lifetime charger. I'd be shocked if he wound up leaving at that point. Uh, but six foot four, 218 pounds. He's 29 years old, so on the right side of 30, at least for right now. 19 receptions, 290, uh, sorry, 249 yards and one touchdown. He tore his ACL in September earlier this year against the Minnesota Vikings. Now, part of the knock on Mike Williams is that he's kind of always injured, but he's not really always missing games. That's the thing. Like he's aside from this torn ACL, I think he's only missed five games or six games in the last like three years. So really not a terrible injury history, just sort of nagging stuff. And it got to the point that I guess, or maybe it was just a financial thing, where they decided to draft Quentin Johnston last year in the first round. And you would have to imagine with a $20 million cap hit or cap savings from, from cutting Mike Williams that they would be wanting to roll with Johnston as wide receiver too at this point in time and save some of the money. The Chargers are $45 million over the cap. $45 million over the cap. They got to cut like a whole bunch of people. It sounds like Khalil Mack's probably going to get cut. Mike Williams could get cut. You could lose... Uh, Keenan Allen. There's a few pieces. Joey Bosa is another name that like could get reworked. There's a lot of money that has to be freed up uh, with the Chargers. Nice thing about Mike Williams, six penalties in seven years. This guy doesn't get flagged. Six penalties. Put that in like place of like any of the Jets wide receivers and it's like a godsend. <laughs> so Mike, Will I like Mike Williams a lot. If you can get him for three years, $45 million, this is just a guess. I have no idea what his contract is coming off an ACL. He was getting paid $20 million a year, like prior to the injury. So maybe it drops him down even more. Like maybe he's got to take a one year prove it deal off the ACL for maybe it's like $15 million or something along those lines. And then he can parlay that into maybe a longer term deal after that. Uh, and playing with Aaron Rodgers, potentially going for a Super Bowl. That would be a really good way to fluff up your contract uh, if you're Mike Williams. So I, I like Mike Williams a lot. I would be all on board with this type of signing. Now, my favorite wide receiver. This is number one on my list, the one that I'm hoping shakes free. And this could be via trade or it could be via free agency. It kind of depends how it shakes out. And that is Cortland Sutton out of Denver. He's six foot four, 216 pounds, 28 years old, had 59 receptions last year, 772 yards and 10 touchdowns. Now, the reason why I think he's going to be cut is because the Broncos are currently sitting $24 million over the salary cap, and they are going to cut Russell Wilson, or at the very least trade him. Either way, it's a massive dead cap hit. You're talking $80 million worth of dead cap, and what the rate, what the Broncos are more than likely going to do is they're going to designate that a June 1st cut, so it's going to split that $80 million over two years, 2024 and 2025, but eating that $35 million or $40 million cap hit, whatever it's supposed to be, would put them at $59 million over the salary cap. And at some point, you, you, like, you renegotiate a lot of contracts, but you still have to get you know, players to agree to those restructures or you have to you know, still make cuts across the board. And Cortland Sutton is one of those players that I think they want to hold on to. 10 touchdowns is a career high for him in a season. And maybe they, they try to make some other moves, but I really think they're going to have to hit the reset button here. And Cortland Sutton may be a cap casualty via cut, now, one thing the Jets could possibly have an inside track on, and it's because Cortland Sutton's contract is really not that bad. It's like 13 and a half, 14 million dollars a year for two more years is what he's got left on his contract. And if the Broncos were possibly thinking about trading for Zach Wilson, maybe the Jets are more inclined, like if Cortland Sutton was going to be a cut, hey, we'll trade you Zach Wilson. We will eat the cap hit from Zach Wilson. And we will take Cortland Sutton on his current contract because $13.5 million a year for two years at 28 years old, I mean, it would be a $5.4 million eating of Zach Wilson's contract. So if you spread that over two years, you kind of think, okay, you're in a sense, you're getting Cortland Sutton for like $15.5 million a year in my mind or $16 million a year. And that is exactly where I think his value is worth. And I think he could be even better in this offense opposite Garrett Wilson with Aaron Rodgers throwing him the ball with friggin' Brees Hall running the rock. I really like Cortland Sutton a lot. I think this has a lot of potential. Nathaniel Hackett, obviously they played together or he coached him last year or two years ago at this point. And his offensive uh, or his wide receiver coach, Zach Aziani is the Jets wide receiver coach. He was the wide receiver coach when Cortland Sutton was drafted by Denver back in 2018. So now 2022 comes along. He winds up coming over to the New York Jets or 2023 comes along. He comes over to the New York Jets. Maybe we have that inside track potentially with Cortland Sutton. Now, I guess devil's advocate tells you, well, 
he had career high in touchdowns with Sean Payton. Maybe he wants to stay there. Maybe he would renegotiate his contract, something along those lines. But I, if Cortland Sutton becomes available, <laughs> either via trade or free agency, I think this makes the most sense for the New York Jets. Guys, I want to hear from you. What do you think of the Jets prospects heading into the offseason for wide receivers? Do you think the Jets get one via free agency? Do you think we're going to have to pivot towards the draft? Which ones do you think actually hit free agency? And which ones do you think actually get franchise tag? Let me know your top wide receivers down below in the comment section. And as always, go Jets. J -E -T -S, Jets, Jets, Jets!